Welcome. This is 49H5 and uh, the title is How is energy stored in a capacitor? And so we say, okay. So here's our visualization of the capacitor. And there's two plates separated by a, a gap, a space. And that space can be literally empty, so filled with a vacuum. Or it can have air inside it or it can have some kind of insulator inside it and whatever we choose will determine the K value, the dielectric constant value. Um, the energy that is stored in the capacitor is stored as an electric field between the plates. It takes energy to create an electric field. It takes energy to store all those charges, all the positives on one plate, they don't want to be together, and all the negatives on the other plate, they don't want to be together. So it takes energy to create an electric field. And if we say, well, my voltage is equal to minus my electric field times my uh, displacement, then I say, and also I remember that C is equal to Coulomb, uh, the, um, not Coulomb's constant, the dielectric constant, the area of the plate, the epsilon naught over D, the separation. This is our physicality equation. And if I let k equals 1, why not? It make it as simple as possible. Then we get that the energy equals 1 half, the capacitance times the potential difference squared, which equals, we got that from the previous section, which equals 1 half epsilon naught a over d times minus ed squared. So this is a half epsilon naught a times d times electric field squared. And so we get this, 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 this equation. The energy is equal to 1 half epsilon naught, the area of the gap times the distance across the gap times electric field squared. Notice the area of the gap times the distance across the gap is the volume of the gap. And we could actually turn around and say u is equal to 1 half half epsilon naught the volume times e squared. That's also a legitimate equation. So, that's how much energy is stored in the capacitor. If I double the electric field, I get four times the energy storage. If I double the volume of the gap, I get, four t I get twice the energy storage. Everything else has been the same. Uh, if I... Can't, well, I can't change my epsilon naught and I can't change a half. So I can play with the volume and I can play with the electric field. Now, in energy storage concerns, there's always this question about what's the energy density. For example, we like gasoline because it's got a tremendous energy density. In a relatively small volume of gasoline, we can contain oh, just a tremendous amount of energy. And so in terms of having a energy resource, it's a really compact resource for us. So when you have an energy source, one of the first questions that technologists will ask is, what's the energy density? Well, let's work that out. We say, well, the energy per unit volume is equal to, well, the energy that we have in a capacitor divided by the volume of the capacitor. And we're going to cheat here a bit. We're going to say that the volume is effectively the volume of the gap. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, so this is u over ad, which equals 1 half epsilon naught times e squared. Uh, this expression is valid for many different com capacitor configurations. The energy density in, in any electric field is proportional to the square of the magnitude electric field at a given point. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of questions. Now, how does the energy stored in the capacitor, that's the u, uh, relate to the electric field within the capacitor. So we have, well, we need the equation, don't we? And we just said that this was equal to one half. We had epsilon naught. We had A, the area of the uh, gap, times D, the width of the gap, times E squared. And in all these things, I think it's really important. I'm, I'm envisaging something like there's my energy and it's asking me about the electric field. So think of a graph. And so we turn around and we say, and I think this is 
the next important thing is circle what's on the vertical axis circle what's on the horizontal axis now half is a constant epsilon naught is a constant a is a constant for this capacitor and d is a constant for this capacitor i'm assuming all that's constants let them equal one then what i see is that oh i'm not plotting e squared i'm plotting e so i have e i have e squared and i have u and when e equals zero this equals zero squared so u equals zero and when this equals one this equals one squared so this equals one and then this equals two this equals two squared so this equals four ah this is going to go like that and that's a quadratic equation next so that's one type of question i can ask rather than having numerical values and then another one i can do is a kind of ratio problem and so what I say is, okay, I have a capacitor and it's got a value of C is equal to 12, oh, sorry, no, man, U is equal to 12 joules. I say a capacitor stores 12 joules of energy when it supports an electric field of 8, so A E is equal to 8 newtons per coulomb. And then how much energy would it store when it supports an electric field of 16 newtons per coulomb? So I'm envisaging a new electric field, which is 16 newtons per coulomb. Let's call this E old uh, uh, and energy old. So I want energy new and 16 newtons per coulomb. And you can sometimes see these in your head and you just know that the answer is going to be such and such. But let's say you're, you're in the middle of a test and you don't know how to, how, to, how, to, how to see it. You just cannot see it. This is what you do. You say, my new energy over my old energy is equal to, and it's going to be my new energy over 16. And you're going to say, okay, um, I'm sorry my new energy over 12 <laughs> and then I say well that's the ratio of the left hand sides let's do the ratio of the right hand sides so that's a half and a half and that's epsilon naught and that's epsilon naught and a didn't change so that's a and that's a and d didn't change that's d and that's d but my e did change and if you like my e went from 8 to 16 well okay i can play that game i can go 8 squared over 16 squared so it's a bit of a ratio problem um i can cancel out all those things that are the same so it's really just the ratio of these numbers so my un over 12 is equal to 16 squared over 8 squared. And you can just work that out with a calculator. But just by the way, to make it a bit simpler, 16 over 8 is just the same as 2 over 1. So I can say 2 squared over 1 squared, which is 4. And if you get a calculator, that does work out to be right. <laughs> so un over 12 is equal to 4. So un is equal to 12 times 4. Un is equal to 48 joules. So these are ratio problems, and it's based on the idea that scientists and engineers sometimes don't care about the absolute values they just say i double this and i triple that and i quadruple this and quarter that what's my new answer um and then there's a couple uh, um, uh, um did you notice how over here i put in the wrong number 
And that's because if you think about it, E could stand for energy and U stands for energy. So again, you've got to have your wits about you. You've got to be, you've got to have an alarm going off at times like this to say, be careful, slow down, do things properly. And then as a teacher, I can tell you uh, there'll be a, a, a small but significant part of the class will get all the way through this problem and they'll put down four as the final answer. And when I look, what they're doing is they're not writing out the whole thing. They're writing out the bits of the math that they think is important. They're using the page as a, as a jotting pad. And so I might get that over that. And the thing is, they're not writing down this bit over here, which tells me that UN is not equal to 4, but UN over 12 is equal to 4. In principle, they're not writing incomplete equations, and that's like not speaking incomplete sentences. And if you just went up to people and just used phrases, um, every now and then they wouldn't understand what you're saying. And if you don't write incomplete sentences, incomplete equations, every now and then you'll make a mistake. And you know, you'll make a mistake on a test, it'll cost you some points. Um, so just try to train yourself to write in complete sentences. Try and make it that every line on an exam answer is correct and complete. And uh, you'll catch things more often. There we have it.